he wasn't just a secret friend for me. He was a, a passion. I found that I was falling in love with Chekhov. I mean, literally. <clears throat> Sylvia! Now you tell me how a 16-year-old girl could connect to this. He asked the bigger questions. I can't explain it, but I connected. I mean, I don't think many marriages are as secure and as strong as this lifetime of life. But it is absolutely impossible. I am not someone you can marry. He was speaking to his audience in an incredibly immediate and direct way. If only I could make clear to you. By telling stories about his fellow countrymen and countrywomen, you know, in the present moment. The area was first mapped by the famous Russian astronomer Ivan Burkov, almost 200. John Burke. I don't think so. I'm sure it was. John Burke was the chief astronomer at the Royal Academy. Oh, at Royal Old Academy. <laughs> What's beautiful about Chekhov is that where it's agonizing for us in, when we're in those moments in reality, when we view it with Chekhov, we can see the humor in it. We can see the, the absurdity of it about how we behave in those dark moments. He's also really, really, really funny. Where's Apollo? He disappeared again, like the cat in that Russian story. Don't you mean the English story, the Cheshire cat? Cheshire? No, sir. Means, perhaps. All right, but... all right. But I, I think we have a challenge with irony in this country. It's very hard for us to understand it. There's an old, old saying on earth, Mr. Sulu. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I know this saying. It was invented in Russia. I was neither a Chekhov expert nor a particularly huge fan, despite Libby's uh, impassioned lectures. Mr. Sulu, if I'd wanted a Russian history lesson, I'd have brought along Mr. Chekhov. I said, so what did you think? And she said, well, after the first act, I thought, who are these people? After the second act, I thought, I like these people. After the third act, I thought, I am these people.